Yay, here we are. I'm your host for tonight, Sarah Lapsley. I just kind of frantically drove here, I drive here after work, and so it was a very sweaty drive, and I got kind of stalled in Point Grey. So they're putting up all these concrete barriers everywhere to prevent people from driving, and I kind of took a chance and went through the side streets and got totally messed up, and then this woman was like parking and kind of owned the road and she had a crate in her parking spot. So she very slowly got out of the car and removed her crate and like was kind of enjoying keeping me behind her because I'm like an outsider, (laughs) you know, and then I was just like fuming, like knowing I was going to be late. And then she looked at me and just kind of smiled like smugly, like I live in Point Grey, have a BMW (laughs) and you live in a basement suite in New West, (laughs) drive a 1997 Toyota. So that's my little rant um, because I was like, oh, I'm going to get cold revenge, but I don't think so. I think I'm just going to rant about her. So I'm very excited to have a couple guests in the studio. And I'm going to turn you guys on and got to talk up really close. Okay. So okay. why don't you introduce I'm yourself? I'm sufficiently turned on. Yes, <laughs> that's what I like to hear. Uh, I'm Jennifer Kobelt. Okay. And I'm uh, Brendan Prost. Um, I wrote and directed the film, and Jennifer is one of the uh, the actors in the film. Yes. Excellent. So I've been looking at the trailer, and I really liked it. So tell me a little bit about yourselves first, and then we'll get into talking about the film. Oh, I get to go first. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Jen. Oh, you're welcome. Um, uh, basically, I, I've been a student at Simon Fraser University doing their film program for the last um, uh, five years. Um, I'm originally from Calgary, but I moved out here uh, for a change of pace and to go to film school. And... Um, uh, Spaces and Reservations is my third micro-budget uh, feature film project that I've kind of financed out of pocket. In addition to all the film work that I do at, at film school, I, I have a real interest in, uh, you know, I guess, w- working in a longer-form narrative um, so you can see characters grow and change and develop. Um, so we did this kind of extracurricularly in between uh, uh, semesters of film school. Wow. Good. And they call you an auteur. Um, it, they, the, 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 the ethereal they do, <laughs> I do, <laughs> but yes, yeah. What, what is an auteur? Um, an auteur, like if you're a, a terribly snobby film student, um, it's basically like a, a, a theory, a way of like taking meaning from films, but I, I use it to describe, you know, uh, my films and my practice of making films because I think my individual authorship is really important, um, when you think about my movies because, um, you know, I, I tend to be the writer, director, producer, cinematographer, and that whole thing. And they're also very personal projects. So seeing them as uh, a, an extension of myself and as an expression of who I am, I think it, it's important to kind of kn- knowing what they mean. Right. So rather sense. than someone who's like a director and agrees to a project and like it, you know, and c- collaborates with people, it's this idea of you've birthed kind of the whole thing. Exactly. Like, I'm not quite like a hired gun. So it's it's like it's it's my baby start to finish all the way through. Good. Yeah. And how about you, Jennifer? Tell us. Oh, well, um, I've been acting for a long time. I remember the first play I did was in elementary school. I got, I got to be a crow in Macbeth. Uh-huh. That's where it all got started. Awesome. Yeah. Although I have the Macbeth rule. Oh, I just broke it. I mean, now you do. Now uh-huh. someone has to leave the room and... And well, I could go three times. Well, you when you're done your bio, you done. can go. Okay, I <laughs> will. Do a circle three times. <laughs> no, I love that play, and that's it's so cool. Play. You're a crow. In yeah, it. so I started at a really young age and decided as soon as I graduated high school, basically, to pursue film. So I went to Vancouver Film School for a year and a half and graduated there, loved it, really found my passion for acting even deeper, and now I've been working in the industry for a while, doing a lot of micro budget and, and independent films and student projects as well and um just just loving it and excited for the way my career is going now definitely yeah. and you you look quite young so you have sort of lots of years ahead yeah Good. i'm younger uh, i'm older than i look <laughs> <laughs> no, no she didn't tell me, me that i looked young <laughs> <laughs> well, say good jeans. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. One of, which one of us is offended? Like we should figure this out. <laughs> no, actually, I feel I feel really good about that. Yeah. yeah. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and what's your sign? I'm a Gemini. I actually. knew you were a Gemini. You just and knew I, it. I well, just as you said, you were older than you look. I was like a Gemini. Right? I just knew that. It's just a thing with Gemini's. Well, actually, with, my birthday is just a few days after the screening, May 24th. Oh, nice. 
Nice. Mm-hmm. So you're an early Gemini. Mm-hmm. And what's your sign, Brendan? Uh, I'm a, a Cancer. Nice. Both metaphorically and astrologically. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, yeah, I just want to hear more about the film, watching the trailer. For some reason, when we were emailing about it, I thought it was a thriller. And then <laughs> last night, I was like, okay, I have to start looking into it. And I'm like, oh, it's a romance, like kind of a bitter romance. And uh, I just, watching the trailer, I was just like, wow, this is going to be obviously a very talented and it's just going to strike a chord because it's so real, like these mm-hmm. issues and relationships. And it's just like, oh, uh, like you get it immediately, that kind of the torment of the stickiness and wanting to stay and wanting to go in the third wheel and all that stuff. So tell us about the story. Um, well, basically, it's the story of a of a young couple. Uh, they deal with like their first serious heartbreak and their first serious breakup and at first they're kind of you know going through their long-term relationship and it it suffers a malaise it's like relationships do like you get in a funk and you're not communicating and you're not sharing as much as you used to and as they're both kind of separately noticing this phenomenon and starting to feel kind of you know starting to feel very crappy about it they um, are both kind of driven towards other people uh, because they're enlivened and they're excited by other people in their life in the way that they're not by their partner. Mm. And it's a very strange and sad and unsettling phenomenon for both of them. But they experience it separately. And uh, we experience um, the boy in the film, his name is Jace, Jamie. Uh, we experience his kind of flirtation and his engagement with this other person played by Jen. And this experience like upsets him um, because it makes him realize a lot about where his relationship is at with his partner Casey, um, and so he puts a stop to it and he you know makes a you know kind of vows to himself that he's going to you know reignite the relationship and make it work. But when he does, he discovers that Casey is also having these same feelings, um, and because of he has the benefit of his own experience and feeling sad and feeling lonely in their relationship, and because he doesn't want that for her he pushes her to go do the same thing and to be with this other person that she's met because he knows how good it made him feel. Well, that's kind of selfless. Uh, yeah, like, you know, selfless acts are like, you know, they're one thing to think about it and he, he thinks about it and he, he knows it's a nice thing to do. But when he goes and does it, he suffers immensely for it mm-hmm. because he realizes, you know, through separating from her, how much he really still loves her and he's still connected to her and obviously everything just goes horribly awry Mm -hmm. and they they (laughs) they break up as they are kind of reigniting their passion for one another yeah so it sounds like it does not have a happy ending no and the movie makes really there's no qualms about it having a sad ending Mm -hmm. yeah and so you played the woman that is it sorry jamie the main character falls in love with so the the one that's pulling him away through the erotic attachment Uh, yeah (laughs) how was that you know, it was a really a really new experience for me because I've never played a character like that. I don't even think in my everyday life I've ever been that person mm-hmm. in a relationship. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm usually the one getting dumped. I'll just put it out there. So. Me, too. <laughs> me too. High five. Dumped. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it was it was really it was it felt kind of good. It felt actually really good because. I got to come at it from this other angle. I wasn't going in there to be a temptress and pull him away. I decided that, well, I just like him, Mm -hmm. and I'm just putting it out there. I'm not trying to kiss him in dark corners or anything. I'm just letting him know that I'm an option without being super forward with Mm -hmm. it, but pretty obvious with my attempts to hang out with him. So that must make you a more sympathetic character, because don't you think people have that? tendency to kind of dislike the temptress absolutely yeah. when, when I read the script uh the first time not the full script but the the portion that I saw for the audition I actually went out for the role of Casey and she's the one that is in the relationship with Jamie so then when I was then offered the role of Cassandra the temptress I I had that exact reaction like oh my god I'm gonna play this horrible woman oh how am I gonna do this mm-hmm. but you know having uh, a lot of discussion before we actually started filming and, and really getting clear on on Cassandra's stance and taking away the judgment and just recognizing what it would be like for me really helped me bring mm-hmm. out a character that, that I, I'm, I'm really happy mm-hmm. to have played. Yeah, because I think we've 
you know, we all play all of those roles at one time mm-hmm. or another, right? Absolutely. We've been the person who's attracted to someone who's in a relationship. and Yeah. And so what about uh, Casey, so the girlfriend of Jamie? And she has another love interest as well. Who's that? Um, she Like, her love interest in the film or the other person that she engages with actually makes no appearance. Um, the the film is about parallel and like symmetrical experiences between Jamie and Casey and we only see a portion of each one's experience and it's not a really obvious like structural thing but although we get the we get to pre, we get to see what Jamie experiences with uh, Jen's character Cassandra we have to, we're in his position that we have to imagine we have to visualize that she is that Casey is having the same experience that he did and that all these scenes that we've seen with Jen Casey is also having um, so it's it's very much an imagined and very like torturous thing for him because he he basically turns into this unseen force that's destroying his relationship. Mm-hmm. I I was going to ask you about your influences. I don't know that much about film, but seeing it, there's a certain pace to it and a tone like sort of a dramatic tone that's reminiscent of other things. Like I'm thinking of who's that guy? Jason, not Bateman, Reitman, or you oh, know, yeah, the kind of, you know, the Bill Murray one, the swimming, the Lost sharks, Transition. you know, Which one? aquarium. Jason Schwartzman. Yes, oh, thank you, Mike. Oh, you're thinking thank of Rushmore. You. Rushmore, yes. Right. See, I, I told you I don't know much about film. No, no, it's totally fine. I was, um, I, <laughs> sorry, influences, inspirations. Um, I think, um... Yeah, more often, I, I'm not an explicitly referential filmmaker, mm-hmm. you know, like in the way that, you know, Quentin Tarantino, like, is a very referential filmmaker, and he's constantly paying homage to filmmakers that he loves and admires, and his films are really an assemblage of images and sounds and bits from other movies. I, I really, I don't write like that, and I don't conceptualize films that way, um, but I, I, I do have influences, and I do have inspirations. Uh, usually, usually they're, like, musical, actually, before they are anything else. I, I listened to the the soundtrack for Aaron Katz's film Quiet City, which is composed by Keegan DeWitt. Um, when I was kind of experiencing one of the experiences that in, influ- that informed the film and the writing of the film, and so that that music was a really big influence on the creation of the script and eventually what the film became. But I mean, cinematically, uh, one of the, one of the big ones for me was uh, Ingmar Bergman's TV series uh, Scenes from a Marriage which is just like this incredibly patient, observative, uh, detailed look at this like this couple's relationship over the span of years. And he does these really long scenes where he just kind of lets the actors share. And there's so much wisdom in watching these characters and what they learn about each other and what they learn about their relationship just in the nature of watching it happen. So that was a really big one for me. And there was another film uh, by uh, Joe Swanberg, who's an American a contemporary filmmaker, who made a movie called Nights and Weekends, which is also about a relationship. Uh, it's a very lo-fi film, and it's basically, you know, it's it's these people shooting a movie with their DV cam, and it's so intimate, and it's so candid, and it's just one of the most realistic relationship films that I've ever seen. And I, I wanted to make a film that was similarly realistic and and similar like felt also like it came from the cultural milieu in which i lived which nights and weekends totally did hmm. sorry that was incredibly rambling i also. love that <laughs> no and i i think i what i was just trying to say before was it it feels really there's something top notch about what you've put together and i can see it really becoming like a mainstream like you could become mainstream what i'm saying is oh, you're a wow. superstar i really thought it was really good I'm looking forward to seeing the film, definitely. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, for no, it's so. totally pro, but yet you're not pro. You're doing all this yourself. Tell us about what that's like. Yeah, it, well, you know, there's a very good reason that people don't make movies for, like, less than, you know, $10,000. or we, we made the film on a budget of $5,000, wow. and we shot for 15 days in a period of 16 days, often, you know, 10, 12-hour days um with you know a volunteer crew and you know volunteer actors nobody uh, getting paid and that sort of thing and basically just scraping together you know the the resources you can muster at the at that time at that point in your career and that point in your life and and making the film that you can with those resources like to me like the the only way to do something like that is to conceptualize a film knowing what you have to work with and that's exactly what I did like and what I you know I try to do consistently is that 
if you're actually interested in doing a project and you have something you want to say and there's something you want to express and you need to do it, you just got to do it with what, what you have right then and there. And so I always think about a film and I visualize a film with all that in mind. Mm-hmm. And, and that way they're, you know, you're not constantly making compromises because you've gone into it with that plan to do it with what you had. And um, that's exactly what we did with this film. And we definitely pushed it to the limit. I mean, that's 15 days and 16 uh, with these long days was just killer. By the end of it, I was just about ready to drop dead. We finished the <laughs> film at about six, six o'clock in the morning after starting shooting it at about 4 yeah. p.m. in the evening the day before. And uh, I, my brain had just ceased to function on that final day. It was. Just I remember brutal. that day. It was. It yeah. was so crazy. It was. Yeah. <laughs> the very last day, and ever, when we left set, I remember just hearing everybody exhale. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, oh, it's over. Okay. <laughs> like, shake it up. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So in addition to doing all that, you're also promoting it on your own. Is that Exactly. Right? So tell us about what's going on with that and what you've planned. Um, well, basically, uh, we're doing a DIY screening st- tour uh, across the country. We start here in Vancouver at the Rio Theater, and then we go to Calgary, which is my hometown, to screen it at the Globe, and then go to Winnipeg, and then to Toronto, and then we come all the way back to Victoria. And I'm driving the film city to city to show it at these community theaters that we're renting out uh, with our own money and uh, hopefully, you know, selling tickets and getting uh, folks to come out and see it, you know, getting into each town about a week beforehand and pounding the pavement and, you know, putting up posters and putting, handing out postcards, maybe, you know, just asking people to come see the film, you know. I'm commanding all listeners to come see the film. Spaces and reservations at the Rio. What's the date at the Rio? May 20th and 27th at the Rio. Okay. And yeah, you can get tickets and stuff on our on our website. But, you know, that's basically our, our, our exhibition plan. We kind of have one shot at this to share the movie with, um, you know, audiences everywhere. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, uh, we'll probably, you know, share it online with people at some point. But right now, you know, I love the theatrical experience and getting to share this film, which is lengthy and and. You know, I think it's better to sh- see it with people in a dark theater. Mm-hmm. And it's the way to watch movies. Yeah, and it's quite long, isn't it, as well? For for a $5,000 budget, you've done, what, a two-hour film? Yeah, it's 140 minutes, so it's two hours and 20 minutes, actually. Um, and, you know, and the great joy of, of making a film with your own money um, completely independently is that the film are, is as long or as short as it needs to be. You know, you're not mm-hmm. beholden to... Um, anyone else and what you know what you do with the movie is up to you so you know if you don't want to send it to film festivals because your movie is you know a little longer than most people expect then that's exactly what you get to do because it's the most it's the most truthful to the film that you want to make it may not be the most you know commercially appealing or the most you know attractive to like the largest audience but it's the most truthful to where i was at to make a film that feels like sitting there for 140 minutes and I don't think it's it's indulgent. I think there's a particular emotional quality to sitting and watching two characters grow and change for 140 minutes. You know, uh, the average runtime at Slam Dance and uh, Sundance and South by Southwest, I think, is around like 75, 80 minutes. So it's a very different experience from sitting down and watching those films. It's going to be good. And you've got a really good website. What's the website? It's spacesfilm.com. Okay. And you can get all the information about our uh, our upcoming screenings. You can watch the trailer. We have a number of interviews with the actors. Yeah, they say some very smart things. And, <laughs> like, and I I say none. I'm not on camera for any of them. Thank God. And uh, other we have behind the scenes video and images from the movie and a uh, you know blog and the whole social media um, cat bag. But you got to check it out. You've, I mean, you've done an an amazing job too like not falter in the middle of it it's such a huge project and then you went on with the promotion and dedicating yourself to driving across the country as well yeah well i I don't know i've been looking forward to this moment for for two years of my life and um you know film and art of any kind is nothing if it's not shared Mm -hmm. you know and getting to share the experience of making it is one thing but getting to share it with an audience i'm sure general agree is it was such a different experience I mean, oftentimes you don't even really get to see the work that you've done. Like, you know, if you're on TV, you miss the the, the, the air date and you, you're just done. Whereas when we had the screening that we all got to see, everyone of the cast and friends sitting in this small, intimate theater space at SFU, it really was, it was a whole experience. It wasn't just watching the film. It was being around the people and hearing somebody start crying or this person gasp or 
everyone holding their breath at the same moment. It was it was surreal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to yeah. see how you're affecting people. Yeah, especially because, you know, although, you know, you may not completely relate to the experience that Jamie and Kate here are having, everyone can relate to the experience of having a relationship of some kind fall apart mm-hmm. in the way that this does. And I think it's an open enough film that everyone comes and they bring their own experience. They, they bring their own experience to it and they ascribe what they've experienced to what these characters are. And I think people, I don't know do you find it quite affecting you know, when we've managed to show it to people and everybody's touched by something different? Mm-hmm. You know, one scene affects somebody in one way and, you know, some, you know, their sympathies with, lie with one character or another and it's really, really interesting mm-hmm. to watch. Are you going to submit it to film festivals and, and so on? Well, unfortunately, like, when you, when you screen a film publicly yourself, you basically um, uh, blackball yourself from any festival programming in Canada you know, it's a, you know, if you ask me, I think it's a very silly rule, but after you've, you know, shattered your premiere status, you're, you're not welcome mm. in any of the major film really? festivals in Canada. We'll go south, I think, if the, if the screening tour goes well enough and there's enough interest in the film here. Um, we could do an American premiere at one of the festivals down south, but again, it's, it's not a film that's for a film festival. It's, it's very low concept. It's, um, there are no stars in it. It's, you know, it's a it's a you know very long film, unusually long for film festivals. The reason, one of the reasons why we decided to do this tour was because you know, it's just not it's just not right for film festivals, or at least most of the ones that I'm aware of. Wow. Well, it sounds like you have a good idea how things work, but I think you're both totally going places. I really do. I think the film is looks really really good. Thank you so and much. I'm looking forward to seeing it on May 20th at you're the Rio. You're coming on Tuesday. Uh, I will Put come to one agenda. of the dates. <laughs> Putting you on the spot right now. Sarah. Are you coming? <laughs> Probably have tickets. I love that. Know. I'll have to check my calendar. No, I'll okay. come to the 20th or the 27th at the Rio Theater because I like popcorn and I want to see the film and meet you guys again. And just give us the name of the website again. Spacesfilm.com. Mm-hmm. And on that site, they have links to YouTube and Facebook and Twitter exactly. and all that stuff. So. See all the videos. Come like our Facebook page. Follow me on Twitter, unfortunately. Awesome. Well, you can follow the actors, too. You can follow me. <laughs> okay, yeah. And and so that was Brendan Prost. 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 Actually, Prost. Almost like Prost, but with no... Ow. Yeah, it's like Ow. in German they say Prost. It means cheers. Really? Yeah. That's your yeah, last name. I, I like know. that. So you go to Germany and everyone's saying, I'm saying my name. And you're like looking around. What? What? Yeah. <laughs> and Jennifer Cobalt. Yeah. Excellent. So do you guys have a request, a musical request? Is there any? Oh, yeah. Oh, we should totally play. Um, Is it something I can get on you? Uh, probably. You can play a song from the film. Um, there's an artist named Chrissy Cochran, uh, originally from Halifax, and she donated a song called Separate Cities. Uh, to the film, and she's actually a finalist in the CBC Searchlight competition. Oh, really? uh, she's doing really well for herself, and she's a really. Oh, it, there's not on YouTube. Is it something I could find on Bandcamp? I think you could do her on Bandcamp. Yeah, Chrissy Cochran. Are but they... yeah, okay. She, she's a, a a really terrific artist, and you know, she's a great example of how you know there's always like this mixed bag of artists who contribute stuff for free to your film. Um, whether they be actors or musicians. Oh, wow. She's really super hot. I haven't met her in person, but, <laughs> I mean, she looks very nice on her website, Let's doesn't she? see if I can find some music. A damn shame, look away, sleep in the wind, and we still move the key. So your song isn't up here. Yeah, it's an older song of hers. So okay. You, you could play something new, and it would be totally awesome. Okay, how about a damn shame? Just got to swear like on the that. air. Oh, I thought you were describing like a like at a reservoir. No, yeah. that's her oh. song. Let's see where the music is coming. <laughs> this is a terrible joke. No, it was great. It was. It seems it was very you. Okay, let's see if, if we not, can get. Jennifer can sing. She's an amazing. <laughs> oh, can't you tell me? There we go. Okay, thank you, Brendan and Jennifer. Thank, thank you, Sarah, for having us on. Take care.